Hi, my name is Quimby Chen, and today I'll be teaching you on how to code your jewel bot. For the first tutorial challenge, let's not only start off with the basics of coding your jewel bot, but coding in general. The jewel bot has lights, a buzzer, and a button, all of which can be programmed. However, in the description below, links will be included for other resources and tutorials, so check those out. Anyways, let's get programming. <laughs> In order to program your Jewelbot, you're going to need to install the Arduino IDE and the Jewelbot board extensions. If you have not done that already, go to jewelbots.com go for more information. Once you have the Arduino IDE open, it will start a blank sketch with setup and loop functions already present, which you should leave as is. I always like starting my programs by declaring the objects I plan on using. Objects are, are things that you can code that have certain properties and behaviors. For instance, think of a dog. It has properties like a name, breed, and color, and behaviors like barking, running, and wagging its tail. Similarly, the Joomla has an object called LED. Its properties are color and its position on the Joomla, and its behavior include turning on, turning off, and flashing. The LED object is also part of the Jewelbot animation class. A class is like a blueprint that describes a certain behavior for the object it supports. The animation class contains different preset light patterns the LEDs can glow. We will be using both the LED objects and the animation class in this video. Notice how I specifically placed them outside of the setup and loop function, which you should do as well. This is known as declaring your variables. You start by writing the type of variable it is, and then a name for it. Setting a name is important because you will be using it to call the object within your code each time. It can be anything you want it to be. However, the type has to always be the same. For instance, our first lines of code instead could be LED, piece, and animation, love. However, that means whenever you want to refer to the LED object, you have to always refer to it as piece consistently. For this video, however, I'm going to stick to calling my LED, LED, and animation as animation. Also note that code is case sensitive. Now that we have all our objects declared, we can start giving them commands, which are also known as methods. For a list of available methods, you can check out the coding section at jewelbots.com go. We are going to start within the curly bracket of the loop function here. This is self-explanatory as everything we type in here will occur on a continuous loop. Let's type in led.turnonallblue. You start by calling your object by name and then calling the method you want to command it to do. Using a period to separate the ending of your object name and the beginning of your method name. Some methods need to know certain properties in order to complete the command, which goes in parentheses after the method name. This method, it needs to know what color you want to turn the LEDs onto. The available colors you can use are blue, red, cyan, green, yellow, magenta, and white. Again, remember that coding is case sensitive. And so it's no accident that the color blue is written in all capitals. Then to finish off the line of code, you end it with a semicolon, which is like the punctuation mark of code. Now that we have our first line of code, we can upload it to the Jewelbot. The first step is plugging your Jewelbot into the computer. Now that we have the Jewelbots plugged in, we want to make sure that we have the correct Jewelbots coding board selected and the proper port. In order to do that, we should go to Tools, Board, and then scroll down to where it says Solo Coding Mode. Now to select the proper port, we have to go to Tools again, scroll down to Port, and then select the port that shows up. I have a Windows computer, so it shows up as COM with a number next to it. For Mac and Linux, it will look differently, which you can see more about in the description below. Once the board and port are selected, you want to press the magic button of the Jewelbot for two whole seconds. After you see the purple fading lights, 
You can press the upload button on the Arduino IDE, which is in the top left corner. After it says done uploading at the bottom here, we can unplug the drill bot to see the code in action. Yay! Now all the lights are blue, just like how we coded it. Now for the challenge part of this tutorial, let's try using the timer object and the other LED methods. Here is some simple code that you can use on your Joolbot. It allows you to test the timer object and the different LED functions and the different LED methods. A copy of this code will be provided in the description below for you to try. Have fun and happy coding!